This is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also to Instagram at Dr. Scott McLean. During this presentation we'll be discussing the Trefoil Restorative. So once the surgery has been completed then the restorative team would start to do the adaption of the bar to the implants to make it passive then following this to do occlusal records. So let's begin. We're going to show actually a patient who's already healed but typically the patient would be at the point where the implants were displaced and sutures would be in place as well. So here we're going to be able to do this to show you a little bit more uh, realistic because we don't want to have a lot of bacteria or spend a lot of time with the patient having their mouth open to show. So showing what happens first we'll take a temporary abutment which is a non-engaging abutment and we'll put this on the center implant and make sure it's in good position and down on top of the implant. You can in fact see this quite well. Next we'll place the transfer abutments on the two posterior implants. One has a high arm and one has a low arm and we'll strategically position these so that there's a little gap shown in red here. Now you can see the anterior cylinder which is an abutment that's not engaging and the two posterior transfer abutments with the long arms. And These are quite rigid which is quite good for when you're placing resin but you do have to leave a space for the resin to kind of come around that center abutment and around the arms of the transfer abutments. So all three of these abutments are non-engaging, which is important when you're doing bridge work because you need to sit on top of the platform here. And that is critical. We don't want to be inside. So we'll start the process of placing the resin around the cylinder. We'll do little increments so that we don't have any shrinkage of the resin. We come back and forth and do different uh, kind of uh, areas and making sure that we're getting these really secure because when we take this off, we don't want this to kind of move or you know disengage and and then we have issues so looking over top you can see a fair bit of resin here holding this uh, transfer jig and we'll remove the three screws now and start to take it out of the patient's mouth so you're realizing that this uh, at this point you have sutures and bleeding going on and so this is a very easy kind of procedure to do because you're not really relying on trying to do impression material at this point to pick up the position of the three implants. You can see that one arm on the transfer jig is higher than the other and this allows for the resin to really kind of engage in the proper area. Now we're going to take a trefoil implant replica and attach it. You can see I'm using the driver and attaching it to one side of it. So I don't want to grab on when I'm tightening to the resin. I'd actually take the screwdriver, engage it into the screw and then you can twist on the uh, replica because it's non-engaging and just hold the driver. So this is a good way to put this whole assembly together for doing your transfer of your uh, implants into the master cast. So very uh, interesting and innovative way. So we're going to pour a base in this uh, really sh kind of shallow rubber base. We're going to put some uh, uh, gypsum inside to pour a cast and then we'll locate this transfer jig assembly in the anterior portion of the uh, gypsum. So by doing this we'll make a master cast that we're going to verify to do all our work uh, and to fabricate the lower implant bridge. At this point the patient's going to have a bit of a break so you may want to put on the healing abutments which are five by seven bridge healing abutments and you can see these are put into place. So this allows for the sutures to kind of settle and uh, allow for a little bit of uh, relaxation for the patient. So as we remove this we're going to be starting to try to adapt the bar to these three implants. So what you'll notice is as we bring the bar in place that the bar has some unique features. So number one it has some dimpling and some kind of uh, serrated areas and we can see there's a little flip at the bottom of the bar as well. So this little flip helps to stop anti-rotational twisting of the bar. But we can see it's designed so it's going to adapt to the resin. It also has compensating abutments which have angular, horizontal and vertical compensation which allows for this 
implant bar to be passive because imagine these implants as they go in will be hitting bone on the walls on the base and so they could be off on an angular compensation like this or they could be off on a horizontal meaning side to side or front to back and then last it could have a vertical kind of issue so these compensating abutments will allow you to kind of tighten them down to make this bar passive and this is going to be the kind of unique features of this bar that's been prefabricated we're going to use our two fingers to hold the bar over the three implants then tighten down the unigrip screws which are the abutment compensating screws so that the bar then is going to be passively fitting on the implants. The goal at this point is not to have the bar attached to the replicas, but rather to use the compensating screws to fixate the abutment itself, because there's many components in the abutment, and this makes the bar passive. So as we look here, we can see that it's now quite easy to make the bar passive. We can hold it down with finger pressure and check this. And we can also take it off because it's not screwed into the replicas. Here you also get a good look at the dimpling of the bar and also the roughened surface for the resin to grab. Once the abutments are, are kind of fixed with the screws, I like to try it on multiple times just to make sure that it is passive on the replicas. I found this abutment tightening quite easy and in fact making it passive was simple. You can see on this cross-sectional model that the way the abutment kind of conforms together, the screw goes through and allows you to be in multiple positions and to make this passive fit. And once you get this passive fit, then you can either laser weld this or you can go back and use some looting resin. And we'll use some resin to kind of fixate these abutments into position so that we keep that passive fit. And once we do so, then we'll, we'll be able to put some clinical screws in to carry forward. It is prudent to micro etch the bar so that where you're going to put the resin on the bar, it uh, is a good idea to micro etch there. So then we'll take the small tip and start to go around where the abutment is. So you can see we do not want to get where the abutment is going to sit on top of the replica. So we're very careful to kind of cure and stop and cure and, and make sure that this kind of area is very protected. But we're going to start with the top and the bottom and then connect as we like here the two together and this will keep the resin secure so that uh, when we're fabricating the prosthesis over the bar that this will be secured and then brought into the whole resin structure itself as you uh, make your hybrid so the bar is about 5.5 millimeters high which means it has a good moment of inertia so that when you have the cantilever you have a thicker bar and you also have the ability to have less rotation. Now that the resin is holding the compensating abutments in the passive fit area, we can then take out the compensating screws without worrying about things kind of uh, falling apart. So we'll take out these compensating screws and then start to replace it with the clinical screws. So I'll show you the difference of the compensating screw to the clinical screw. The clinical screw itself is a little bit longer and we can see it's the black on the left. So we'll put one of these clinical screws in and we can put this in this position so we can do a Sheffield test. So a Sheffield test is going to check for passive fit in the mouth. So what we're doing is inserting this screw in and then we can check and make sure as we screw this down that when one side is screwed down the other two abutments should be in, in the exact passive fit position. So you can see as we screw this side down, we'll do this in the mouth, that we can see that the abutments are fully seated on top of the replicas here, but we'll also be able to visualize this in the mouth. We'll use a sterile Pyrex bowl with some chlorhexidine in it to disinfect the bar prior to placing it into the patient's mouth. You can see the single screw is in position now, so we'll carry this to the patient's mouth. So the screw is on the patient's right side and as we put this down on top of the implants now we can see it's sitting quite easily so you don't have to take an x-ray at this point because the implants themselves sit about four to five millimeters above the tissue so you can e easily visualize what's going on here 
So we'll tighten down that one screw and we'll do the Sheffield test. You can see in yellow the screw is down. Here in the red arrows we can see that this is passively fitting down on top of the implants. So the single screw test is usually the way that you can tell that this bar is sitting passively on top of the implants which is very important at this stage. We're now going to take the clinical screw back out and start to put in the lab screws which are the longer screws and they come with the trefoil bar when you purchase the bar the screws are all in the same package. So we'll tighten this down and we'll have a look at this on the master cast and we can see that now these are sitting up about uh, close to 20 millimeters um, and so this is a position that we're going to be kind of knowing that we want to fabricate the, the final prosthesis. So we'll take these uh, pins, put them into place. We'll take a, a bowl and heat up some wax. This wax is a pre-fabricated wax rim. You can purchase these already made and so we can take this and after it's heated we can slide it back down over until it touches the bar. You can add enough wax until you have, you can add another piece in there if you want and, and kind of cut it back. Our goal for this procedure is to pick up the occlusal records right from the implants themselves to the mandible. So we, we want to have this uh, bite registration going right to the implants rather than to the soft tissue. So by having this so it's screwed down on the implants and then having the occlusal record to be picked up on the rim, we're able to get a very accurate record so that we can minimize the amount of occlusal kind of equilibrations that have to be done later on because some of these are going to be difficult when the patient is under anesthesia. So we can see here that the records are being picked up. So we're using clinical screws at this point because we want the wax to be picking it up without hitting any of these uh, screws coming through the rim. And as we're picking this up, we're checking our vertical, checking uh, our references to vertical dimension at rest, anterior, posterior, CR, making sure that we get this into a position that is repeatable. So we're having the patient do this a number of times and then we check the vertical again and uh, get these records picked up so that we can minimize the problems later on. In this case, we're going to show how to do also a pickup of the soft tissue under the bar. So we'll take a medium body PVS and inject it underneath the bar. And you can do this either the day of surgery when you're fabricating the first bar or do this even months later, come back and be underneath the bar and pick it up. And both will be uh, enabling you to kind of seal off this area if that's what you want to do. Now, some people just leave the area under the bar open and make it a kind of a self cleansing area, and other patients want us to kind of fill that in. So, here we're going to take a record as well for our COSAL record. So, we'll put some bite registration in, which is a nice firm bite registration, and then we'll uh, have the patient close into the position and we'll keep them in that position as uh, that material sets. And this will enable us to mount on the articulator in a very exact position that's transferred right down through the implants. We'll cut this bite registration back and check it. You can see how easy it is to verify that we're into position here. And uh, so this is always good. We have to have the patient sitting up as well. We find it difficult to have the patient laying back, especially on a a surgical table or a chair so here by having the patient seated in the uh, normal position uh, to the floor we can kind of find this position now we're going to take these records out and transfer them back to the articulator so there have been a number of different techniques to kind of pick up this information in the mouth bear in mind that the patient's going to have sutures here so we like to do it with this lower pickup underneath the bar and then come over top of the bar with the uh, stabilized base. That way you can have the screws underneath, they're not going to get in your way and, and uh, you can find the channels to the screws And because you're really just going to pull off that top and put it back down. So once we pull it off we can also do our soft tissue model work quite easily because we can put the soft tissue model work on the master cast and then put the impression over top of this which will give us the, the kind of shape. We don't want to have kind of a border molded uh, type of bridge here anyway. We want this to come down and hit the soft tissues with a little bit of pressure. So this is going to be uh, making it very easy. So we want to make sure that we get a little bit of pressure from 
the resin underneath just to kind of cut off the soft tissue communication. Now, some doctors like to leave this open so that you can then have cleansability underneath it. We like to kind of close it up a little bit at this point. The jury's still out. So we uh, don't have to border mold this. We just have to know where the ridge is underneath the bar itself. So once we mount this on the articulator, we have a face bow mounting plus the, uh, you know, the bar mounting itself with the stabilized base. And this gives the uh, technician then the ability to make the rest of the bridge by taking the bar and starting to add teeth to it and doing a wax up and they can then see everything they need to do. So we've verified the records, we've verified that the occlusion is good and the occlusal records that we picked up and uh, so this makes it so that when we go to put the, the final bridge in it's going to take a lot less time because we have uh, all the records that we need. You can see that the uh, pin has been set to zero. The technician can then take this and start to do their magic. And so we'll get this back within a number of hours. And uh, so you can see that this is a very, very effective technique to use for the patient. They get back this beautiful trefoil bridge. And the patient's quite excited about this because they get this very quick. So this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this has been a YouTube presentation about implant dentistry. Be sure to subscribe so that you'll get an automatic update telling you that a new video has been put on the internet. And also check it out at uh, Instagram. It's at Dr. Scott McLean. And uh, hope we can uh, connect there as well.